Okay, so now let's see how we can save the animation as image sequence or a video file. To do that, first go to render setting, set the image size that you want, and then uh, all we need to do is just right click on the timeline and hit play blast. But before that, make sure to go to uh, the option box and here set the display size to from render setting. This way it is going to read the resolution that we set over here. And here you can set the format if you want it to be a video or uh, an image sequence. And uh, I'm going to just save it as AVI, name the uh, video file and hit play blast. It is going to go through the timeline and save your uh, video. Like this. And that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, this is the method that I recommend, uh, just use the play blast, uh, you're going to get exactly what you have in the viewport. Uh, beside that you can also use my hardware. And for that, let me come to this scene, uh, just use uh, my hardware. And now if I hit render, it is going to look uh, completely different. And that is because in my uh, x-ray window, I have to disable x-ray on rendering. Uh, so make sure to first uncheck this option. Uh, and then if we render, it is going to be the same as uh, the viewport. When you have this checkbox enabled, it is going to enable back all the lights in the scene and the result is going to be very different than what you have in the viewport. For rendering, Using my hardware tool, you can just use like any other render engine. You can use uh, batch rendering or uh, rendering as sequence. Uh, there is also another method that I don't really recommend. It is very buggy and it may crash a lot, but uh, it has some nice advantages. And that is going to be using my software. Uh, for that, also make sure to first uncheck this option. And then if we hit render, it is going to also give the same result, but here you have the option to uh, increase the anti-aliasing quality to a higher degree. In some cases, it can make a, a lot of difference. So uh, while the overall it looks very good, there are some specific, uh, specific angles that you may get a, a very aliased edge on the object. So for example, uh, I had one uh, here, not sure how much noticeable it is in the uh, compressed video, but this is the uh, hardware 2 result, and this is the Maya software. Uh, if uh, you can see, it is much smoother than this one. But overall, the Blast and my hardware too are, are going to be just enough uh, for most cases. So uh, to increase sound aliasing quality with uh, my software, all you need to do is just set the quality to production quality. And one thing that uh, you need to do is that the ray trace, it should either be disabled or set the reflection to zero. And I am going to show you why in this scene. So uh, this is going to be another advantage of using my software. Uh, so for example, here we have a, a scene. This is supposed to be a glass. While the baking of transmission can be can act very good with X-ray uh, on the rough surfaces, when you have a very shiny surface, it is not going to just work. Uh, if, if we want to have a real refraction, we can actually use my software and it is going to be very fast. And to do that, let's uh, enable Team Vault update the shader, uh, I just use the hotkey, if you don't set the hotkey, just press the update shader, and then uh, select the material, go one level back, and go to surface material. And here on the ray trace uh, option, just enable refraction, and set your index of refraction. Uh, now, let's go to uh, render setting, I set the quality to production because I want to have a nice anti-aliasing and all of that. And under ray trace quality options, uh, make sure to disable reflection and just keep the refraction. And now if we uh, do a render, see that we now have a real refraction on this object. And 
uh, the rest of things look pretty much the same and the rendering was also quite fast and uh, the reason we disable reflection is that because if we enable it it is going to crash or it is going to result in a white uh, it is just going to add a white effect on uh, all of these uh, surfaces so let me uh, just quickly do it another time let's set it to 1, hit render and this time it didn't crash but you can see that it is uh, the object's dust doesn't look right because it tries to cast a, another reflection over the reflection that we already have so let's uh, just keep it as zero uh, so yeah uh, if you want to have a real refraction you can also use my software if you are using uh, if you have a very basic scene if the things just get a little bit uh, more complicated it is more likely that the software, my software is just going to crash. Uh, the last advantage of using my software is the motion blur and the depth of field. Both of them are going to be in a very good quality. And while we have motion blur in the viewport, the motion blur that you get in the software is going to be in a, another level. So you have 2D motion blur, which is going to be very fast, like this. And you have 3D motion blur, which is going to give you a much better quality and I guess it is also going to work on deformation and simulations because this one that we have in the viewport is not going to affect those objects so uh, you can also take advantage of this and that is uh, pretty much it uh, let's cover some of the issues that we may face with my software so in case you actually want to use it you can get the most out of it so the first one is going to be black spots on flat surfaces so in a scene like this the ground is just a flat plane it has no division at all just a single quad so if we lower the angle uh, to get close to the floor and we render it can look like this which is uh, just terrible and an easy fix to that would be to just add division to the ground just like this so here on this one we actually have the division and no matter how close I get it is not going to it is not going to uh, give you that issue and the next one is going to be the weird looking light map or textures if something like that happened uh, you just need to assign a new material just assign a new material and select it update the shader reassign the light map if you're not using a shared uh, uh, reflection actor just hit the build selected to pick the reflection for the object again and it is going to fix the issue uh, the next is two darker bright render that was the issue with the auto disable x-ray just uncheck it when using my software and lastly, having white surfaces, which was caused by the ray trace reflection. And that is uh, all the uh, known issues that I faced while using my software. And hopefully you can take advantage of that for some of your renders. But uh, overall, I still recommend that you just use Play Blast or uh, my hardware too. And that is it.